my slides visible ballaji yeah yeah it's visible you and loud yeah. and clear yeah thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity dr namrata madam and rajesh sinha and mahipal sir also thanks dr balla for the nice introduction after uh, once again i thank kalza is india for this opportunity after the wonderful talk uh, i open a talk from dr arul sir i think uh, my job made me simply uh, more and more simpler to talking on this trifocals the way to go this is my financial disclosure i am consultant for kalzais india so coming to the natural crystalline lens it has got a good accommodation clear vision at all distances which is glass free clear vision in all lighting conditions great contrast sensitivity with a minimal abrasion with no rotational asymmetry so these are the options surgical treatment options for presbyopia talking about the lens procedure most of uh, my friends still doing multifocal intraocular lens very good results trifocal lens i think since last couple of years some of the companies come with uh, this particular model still some of our friends still putting extended range of vision ials coming to the corneal procedure there are three four procedure available in the market mainly presbyon presbylasic supra core even some of our friends still doing corneal inlays which is implanting in the non dominant type i was part of this presbyopia society in the world so some of even our friends also still are doing a procedure like by implanting a pmma segment something called sclera spacing device or even they ablate the sclera with a something called laser s procedure so let me come to one or two word about the diffractive intraocular lens the basically the principle here is of diffraction in conjunction with the interference to create more than one foci basically what happens every intraocular lens has got both the anterior and the posterior surface so what happens in this uh, diffractive lens the refractive power will be always provided on the anterior surface of the lens and a diffractive power comes from the multiple grooves on its posterior surface so what happens you can see in the picture when whenever there is a plane wave or transferred into the spherical waves after the diffraction so the what exactly happen the spherical wave propagation from different points leads to a wave interference so this is from the fusion fresnel principle so what happen the constructive interference due to the parallel phase relation results in the new wave so i think here you can understand very well the higher the grating density the stronger the angle of deviation of light so the more rings are placed on the lens surface that means the higher is the add power here you can see here shorter the width that means higher the add power wider the width that means lower the add power see here up you can see the plus 4 adapter for near add here plus 3 add for the near add so if you give plus 4 add for near that means it is almost like equivalent to 3.2 at spectacle plane if it is plus 3 add means it is 2.25 at spectacle plane so these are the limitations of a multifocal lens especially previously we used to use lot of refractive multifocal lens mainly it is depend upon the pupil size definitely there is a, we have to tell the patient especially for intermediate distance they have to wear the glass of course definitely there is a decreased contrast sensitivity and with some amount of glare and halos so this is where this intermediate vision come into play because most of this multifocal lenses the which has not been addressed it was problem for some of the occupations like computer professionals painters drivers so they have to really modify their lifestyle so now what is the patient expectation they need to have the same vision what they have enjoyed before presbyopia so they want to lead an active life without being troubled by eye glasses this is where this uh, trifocal comes into the play this is what i was telling you 
the first this is the first uh, uh, generation bifocal ials you can see how these wedges are placed so then when comes the second generation bifocal design where there is a wedges are broader so this is plus 4 and plus 3 so in intermediate there is a mix and match of shorter wedges and the longer wedges that gives the patients a for reading for intermediate distance so my main stay of today's talk is ever talking about the zeiss atelisa tri 839 mp which is based on the same high performance so what they call always that a cutting edge technology so what they have given here for near addition is plus 3.33 and intermediate addition of plus 1.66 so because of this something called uh, this design normally patient will have a reduced potential for uh, uh, especially reduced potential visual disturbance and also improved night vision so uh, it also significantly improves the intermediate vision without compromising the near or the far vision so this is very important i think probably the compared to any other lens available in the market if you see the light transmittance rate is almost around 85.7% once again it is because of its optic design they call it as something called optimized smooth microphase optic design there is a the reason they always claim that these lenses are, are of course has got a reduced light scattering so coming to the asymmetrical light distribution you can see here it has got a very equal light distribution for distance intermediate and near especially if you implant these lenses for a younger patient with active pupil the chances of their depend upon on the spectacles will be much lesser also the asymmetrical uh, light distribution is stable for all light condition which is optimized for night driving and also reading in the low light this is very very important this is a one more point i want to put it here most of this atelisa lenses either whether monofocal or bifocal or trifocal lenses what they have done size even though it's a hydrophilic lens with the hydrophobic surface in addition it has got a anti pco barrier on the posterior surface of the lens that protects the pco protection this is a comparative study of this uh, optical bench measurement using in situ model of intermediate visual quality with this at lisa with uh, other brand appetized bifocal lens and the other trifocal lens if you see here when it is in the 3 mm and the 4.5 mm size still the lens behaves much better especially in the poor light condition so this is very important so lens has to behave very well whenever there is poor light condition when you talk about the high resolution at all distance patient immediately able to clearly focus back when they are seeing from a distance immediately they could able to focus back for the near object this is the great advantage you can see here far distance intermediate distance and near distance much much better compared to the any other lens available in the market so coming to the loading system these lenses actually they give a something called blue mix injector uh, totally a preloaded system if you see once i think it's the most easier lens to implant how uh, we are showing in the model just go within the group when you press it you will get a that click sound then you have to remove the lock then fill the cartridge with the some amount of viscoelastic this is very important so before locking or after putting the lock also you can put the some amount of viscoelastic then you can go ahead with the injecting system see this is the one more video i'm just showing you i'm not showing the feco part i did a feco in a pinpoint pupil almost uneventful surgery now you could be able to see the injecting system with this blue mix injector how nicely it is going inside the bag you need not have to do any sort of manipulation after the injection you could be able to see how the lens is centrally placed even i want to tell one of my few of the experience sometime when you do your axis little bit run off also but how because of his four haptic design lens will stay exactly in the center in the bag 
this is a few our results i think in 132 patients in 76 patient 132 eyes mean age is around 58 years so this was the pre operative best corrected visual acuity six, around 624 then came patients came for 3 years follow up see here you could able to see the uncorrected distal visual acuity the best corrected distal visual acuity after the end of the 3 years if you see even end of 3 years also the spherical equivalent with these lenses is almost stable. That means hardly remaining. Once again, thanks to the IOL Master 700, which gives the accurate biometry. So coming, talking about the uncorrected intermediate visual acuity in the long mer scale, in the end of one month and the three year, almost patient had a almost error, does not require any glasses except around 6% of the patient. Even for the near vision also, only around 4% of the patient was telling that they may require a, uh, the spectacles for very fine print. So this is about the classical feature of the defocus curve of 89 MP at one month. So now coming to the quality of vision, this is very important, especially talking about glare. So when you see about the experience, only 60% oh, Patients had a little bit glare and 20% had a moderate glare and 20% of the patient never had any glare. Coming to the severity, none of the patient had any severe glare. Only 5% five, uh, five, five of the patient was little bit bothersome this glare. But 70% of the patients are very, very happy. Now let me come to the one the patient really require. Only 6% of the patient really require to wear the glasses only for, for very fine print. This is about the toric trifocal, that is a Zeiss 939 MP, we have around 52 patients data in 84 eyes, mean age around 67.13, and uh, almost uh, mean preoperative spherical equivalent minus 0.81 plus or minus 3.3 of even uh, mean preoperative corneal astigmatism around 1.5 diopters. So, see here once again, in comparison with the 839 MP, 939 MP also, once again, if you put it exactly in the bag. Of course, once again, thanks to the IL Master 700 with the Callisto system, which guides us to do the best result. This is the results after two years, best corrected distance visual acuity. Even spherical equivalent is almost next to zero, almost around 0 0.25. So talk, talking about the refractive astigmatism, if you see the patient's power, around 23% patient or the cylinder is between around two to three cylinder, but most of the patients are ranging between around 1.5 to 2 cylinder and only 29% of the patient had between 1 to 1.5 cylinder. But if you see post how much is the post-operative refractive astigmatism remaining, 80% of the people had a almost a astigmatism less than 0.25. This is very, very important. Only 2% of the people had around astigmatism around 0.75. Only 3% had around 0.5, but around... 15% of the people had astigmatism between 0.25 to 0.5 cylinder. So more than 95% of the patient had a refractive astigmatism less than 0.5 diopter. In conclusion, trifocal intraocular lens implantation can perform by any cataract surgeon who is aware of the principles of refractive surgery and handles precise intraocular lens calculation. Once again, I am insisting on the so you need to have a very good biometry. Once again, thanks to IL Master 700 for doing this good job. ATL is a tri demonstrated excellent functional vision at distance, intermediate and near vision in all our clinical evaluation. Almost all patients enjoyed spectacle independence after ATL is a tri implantation in our clinical evaluation. So my what I do, like patients around the age of 42 to 45, if the patients like really want a permanent solution, once again, my first choice is going to be the ATLISA Tri-839 MP. Once again, I thank AOS and also Carl Zeiss India for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, one and all.